Do you guys think it's here? Do you guys really think it's here? Do you think that this is the start of the bear market or even worse, the black swan or the recession? If you were participating in the market today, today is Thursday, April 4th, then you noticed something that doesn't happen quite often. The market is up a percent and a half and then ends up down a percent and a half. If you measure this bearish engulfing candle, and this is the first bearish engulfing candle all year, if you measure this top to bottom, you get a measurement of around negative 2.1%. This is the largest bearish engulfing candle top to bottom since August 24th right here. This also is applicable to QQQ, the NASDAQ, right? We have a bearish engulfing candle here, the last biggest bearish engulfing candle of a similar size was August 24th as well. So in this video, I want to talk about why this happened and what this means. Is there any new data here that you can digest for the market upcoming? This is the specific reason that I told you last video that I would much rather play the VIX because there will be a disproportionate move in the VIX than the indices. What we are seeing in this landscape, in this landscape where it is data-driven, where the headlines are really dominated by the story of inflation, the story of rates, rate cuts, the Fed, jobs data, GDP, et cetera, during this environment where everybody knows that we are close to a recession based on the traditional markers, right? The VIX is going to act disproportionately to the indices because any semblance of either strong data or any semblance of the Fed not cutting rates anymore is really going to cause jitters in the volatility index. And so we banked 67% on these VIX calls, which I gave you, by the way, in the last video or the, not the last Tesla video but the last market video before that. Now, I was getting some questions because these VIX calls were down like 10%. Obviously, things don't move immediately. People were saying, oh my God, I cannot believe I listened to you on the VIX calls. Yeah, well, you listened to me and good job, you got paid. So why did this happen and is it a sign of things to come? Let's get right into it. But first, I just wanna say that these ads right here are back in stock. I have them in black. Why is this in plastic wrap? I have them in black. Make sure you go to the travelingtrader.com to get them. So the first reason that I think people are missing, and I posted this on Twitter, by the way, follow me on Twitter for free trading and finance content, as well as on Instagram. I post on both of those platforms daily, but I was basically saying that we tend to see a ton of volatility during NFP, which is non-farm payrolls and jobs week. And it boggles my mind that people don't look at this right here, which is basically the economic calendar, especially if you trade futures. Futures are all based on red folder news. Now, I'm not saying that if the news breaks one way, then futures are going to do So I'm not saying that it's predictive of the direction of the futures. I'm saying that the futures itself, the algorithm, runs on the fact that there is red folder news. Now, whether we are at a supply zone, demand zone, whether we've taken liquidity or not, that's going to determine, obviously, the, the direction. But the movements, the volatility, are fueled by red folder news. But if you look here, you'll see that this week was full of jobs data. We had jolts on Tuesday, ADP non-farm payrolls on Wednesday, unemployment claims on Thursday, and then the big one, non-farm employment change and unemployment rate on Friday. And typically, this is what we see. If you look at the last time that NFP and unemployment claims were reported, we have a very similar candle here, this red candle right here. Same thing, this was back in February, right before NFP, right before unemployment claims. So it is definitely a volatile event, especially now when, like I said, the headlines are dominated by data. The fact that this is a large engulfing candle though is something that we have to talk about. So is this something shortable? Is this something dangerous? Well, I think that this will induce a lot of shorts. I think that a lot of people will go short here. But like I said, if you take a look at the last major engulfing candle, this by textbook definition is supposed to be bearish, meaning you're supposed to be able to short after this. And we ended up climbing for another two weeks. So as I told bears on Twitter, you're better off waiting for proper market structure shift before doing so. Now, the jobs report itself isn't the only reason we saw volatility. This is what I made my last market update video about, was the fact that there is now a disconnect between the rate cuts that the Fed is signaling and the rate cuts that the market is expecting. So if you saw my video talking about Jerome's presentation from, from Good Friday when the market was closed, I said that Jerome had snuck in there 
that the Fed was probably not looking at any rate cuts, right? Or that the Fed is not even in a rush to cut rates. And we are now seeing other Fed members, other major Fed members talk this way as well. Kashkari says he expects two rate cuts. Remember, this went from six to three. Now he's saying two, but it's possible there will be none. So the Fed is clearly normalizing this narrative that we might not get rate cuts. The president of the Richmond Federal Reserve said it would be smart to take its time to cut rates due to persistent inflation. So this is now becoming the narrative when last year or last summer, all we were hearing about were six rate cuts, no eight rate cuts, no five rate cuts, right? But the data is just too strong. And why are people excited about rate cuts? Well, this is something that I showed last time too. There is this misnomer that when the Fed cuts rates, the market tanks. This is just simply not true. When the Fed cuts rates, the market rallies. The market has tanked before when the Fed cut rates, but this happened because of a recession. If you take a look at 2001, 2007, these are recessionary years. So when the Fed cuts rates, during a recession or right before a recession, yes, the market tanks because during a recession, the market doesn't tank because the Fed cuts rates. The Fed cuts rates because the recession has already taken a hold of the economy and likely the stock market has tanked as well. And the reason the market doesn't like this is because the market wants to act like we don't have any recessionary risks, right? They are expecting the Fed to cut. The Fed is going to cut. Everything is going to be smooth. Rates are going to go down, which means there's no pressure on the economy, which means that things are likely not going to break, which means that companies can start hiring, which means that people can start buying houses and cars again because rates are cheap, which means that people can rack up credit card debt, take out student loans, et cetera, everything that interest rates touch in the economy, right? But the Fed is simply and unfortunately not going to cut until it is likely too late. I've talked about this before and everybody loves to point to the mid 90s when we had a soft landing, but we were not fighting inflation in the mid 90s. We did not we weren't coming from double digit inflation and inflation was still stubbornly above 3%. This is the issue, right? When we're talking about soft landings, we are talking about can the Fed fight inflation with the use of interest rates? keep those rates higher for longer until inflation gets down to 2% and nothing happened to the economy? And the answer is that has never, ever happened before and will likely not happen now. The market's wish to rush to cut rates is likely not going to happen. The more they figure that out, the more that Fed members delay rate cuts, we will continue to see this type of volatility until something in the economy breaks. So how should you play this? How am I going to play this? As always, I do like to give you a semblance of my plays here because you guys always ask for them and you find value in them. Like I said, we bought VIX calls. Those are up 67%. I ended up closing these. If you want access to all of my trades in real time, what I'm doing with stocks, what I'm doing with futures day trades, how I'm hedging, what I'm doing with option selling, if you want my full analysis in terms of my market analysis, my technical analysis and fundamental analysis, all that is in the description below. We go live with the team every single day, and it is me doing the lives. I live trade with the team every single day, giving you the game plan. Make sure you sign up using the link in the description. As you guys know, I also gave you the Russell 2000 in that same video. We closed those IWM calls today for 74% as well. And if that wasn't enough, we are also doing a funded channel on Discord, helping traders pass their evaluations, become funded traders, use someone else's money in order to trade. The last 10 days, I've taken one loss and it was this day on March 28th. So if you want to get funded, if you want access to all my plays, link is in the description below. Come and join us. All right, let's get into what does this mean for the market and how am I going to set up these plays? So am I going to short the market here? As I said, no, I'm not crazy enough to short the market here. Now, VIX is a different story and I will get into that in a second. But essentially, you want to break market structure with displacement, right? With a convincing move here. As we saw before, these engulfing candles can give really uh, false signals, right? Like the market can continue up starting tomorrow if we get a jobs report that the market likes. However, if we get a candle like this, for instance, this is when I will start contemplating a short on a retracement, right? A nice full body candle 
below this right here. The problem I see with novice traders, with people who try to take random trades, is that they just want to guess the tops and the bottoms, right? They don't know what waiting for confirmation looks like. Like they would rather front run shorts and front run longs without confirmation because they want the absolute tippy top or the absolute bottom, even though they're probably going to close their position early anyway. But this is the type of confirmation that you want to wait for. So if we get this type of confirmation, especially if we end up filling this gap here on QQQ, then on the retracement, I will be interested in shorting this. Otherwise, I would much rather wake up neutral, see what the situation is, day trade it as we do every single day, whether long or short, I don't care. It just depends on what is the most optimal play at the time. But in terms of holding these broad-based shorts, nah, I'm not trying to short the market here just yet. And then in terms of the VIX, what I'm waiting for, as I said in that last video that I did, when VIX gets to this level here below 13, to me, it is just an automatic buy this year, right? And I am going to wait for the VIX to come back down before buying it again. Like I said, we made 67% on it already, but I am waiting for the VIX to come back down. If it comes back down to this level, then I will just buy some calls and sit on them. And lastly, do I think that we are going to go into a recession? Yes, I do. All of the markers are there, guys. Uh, even when you look at something like oil, even when you look at something like gold, this is behavior that happens before a recession. Gold hits all-time highs. Oil continues to rally. Oil was $67 a barrel just a couple of months ago. It is now trading at almost $90 a barrel. This is the type of thing that you see before a recession. We obviously have these inverted yield curves that are very far away from uninverting. And economic data just continues to come in strong. Like I said in my last video, out of the last seven CPIs, only one came in line. That's it. One came in line, one came below. The rest of them came higher than expected. So inflation is being extremely stubborn here. Admittedly, I don't know when we will get a recession. Could be this year, could be next year, but I think things are starting to show. I want you to comment down below and let me know whether you think this is the start of the crash, the legendary crash that's supposed to come. As you guys know, I started trimming my portfolio beginning of March, right? I can rest easy on my pillow because I know what this type of consolidation looks like. I started trimming my portfolio here and we are still in that range, right? We are still in this range here. So for me, I can rest easy knowing that I trimmed. I did pick up some stuff on discount, but most of the stuff that I bought back in October and back in 2022, I started trimming here. Now I'm just hedging, picking my spots, buying things that, that are at major discounts, not buying anything at the all-time highs. But do you think that this is the market crash, right? Or do you think this is just a temporary pullback and that the market will continue up? Do you think we will actually see a recession this year? Do you think that we'll see a recession next year? Do you think the Fed is going to cut rates this year? Or do you think the Fed is not going to cut at all? I love to hear from you guys because everyone provides a different perspective. So let me know in the comment section below what you think. Make sure you sign up to the group. Do not leave any more money on the table. If you have just zero idea how to play things, you don't know how to day trade, you don't know how to hedge, you don't know whether you should buy options or sell options, you have zero idea of how to trade or how to invest, make sure that you join using the coupon code in the description. Would love to have you. Signups for Mastermind 6.0. Mastermind 6.0 will start April 21st. Signups are starting now. Make sure you apply using the link below as well if you want to join the Mastermind. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Yes, get the black hat limited edition. Peace.